If you had told me a few months ago that my first ever YouTube video would be part of an examination, I'd probably call you stupid or dumb. But uh, here I am. Uh, this is part of uh, the examination in the Public Relations Crisis Management and Media Training course at FIV in Vienna, where I currently spend my exchange semester. Uh, so I'm going to uh, analyze a controversial, an interview about a controversial topic. And the topic I chose is the killing of Marius, a young giraffe, in the Copenhagen Zoo back in 2014. Uh, it was euthanized because uh, its gene and didn't fit with the rest of the pack, uh, which could uh, lead to uh, an unhealthy population in the zoo. Uh, and therefore, they had either to send it away or uh, kill it, and um, they chose the latter uh, and made a public dissection of the animal in the zoo in front of uh, families and kids. Uh, so that sparked quite a little scandal in the country and also across the globe. Uh, and uh, the following interview I'm going to discuss is the, an interview of the director of the zoo, a man called Bengst Holst, uh, by um, English journalist Matthias Fry, who worked at Channels, Channels News 4. Uh, and that interview was from the 9th of February 2014. Um, through the, first of all, if I was the one being interviewed, uh, I would like to know a few things beforehand, um, a, a few things I would prepare myself to. And that would be uh, always uh, be clear about um, the whole background of the story, have my facts straight so I don't stumble uh, or don't deviate from my initial line. Uh, always stand my ground and not be on the defense. Uh, otherwise, you'll be at kind of a, in a certain way of the in the mercy, at the mercy of the interviewer, and you don't want to be that. You want to stand uh, straight on your path and don't go in another direction because that will be seen as a sign of weakness or insecurity about your decision. Um, always try to control your body language, uh, he, especially if you're standing up. In this case, he's seated, so it doesn't have that much of an impact. But never look down, for example, when you answer, um, which he never does, by the way. Uh, but that would be the kind of things I would like to have knowledge of before being on air. So, uh, about the interviewer itself, Matthias Fry, the journalist. Um, his attitude and his agenda are very visible from the first question on. Um, he basically right away asks questions which really imply uh, that he has a very subjective side to the whole story. Um, he right away uses a strong terms such as uh, cruelty and uh, e emphasizes on the whole process with exaggerating, with putting uh, some different words that will maybe bring more um, uh, of an emotion from the audience. He try he's trying to play on the human and uh, sentimental, emotional side of the audience, and also showing his own. For example, he uses the word dismemberment instead of dissection, uh, or uh, he also, for example, uh, said about the animal was torn to pieces, and that the children present at the scene at the dissection were horrified. Uh, so he's really trying to put emphasis on the. Um, the repercussion of this process and how it could be interpreted, at least from his point of view. Um, uh, at the at minute one six, uh, we can see there's a very uh, contrast between the interviewer and the interviewee uh, in the culture and the mentality. Um, there is an argument about the London Zoo, uh, how the London Zoo function, and it's quite similar to the Copenhagen Zoo, which the English journalists respond by. Uh, this kind of dissection would never happen in a London Zoo because, and I quote, they will protect the children from it. Uh, and then he re we really can see there's a difference uh, the two cannot really grasp. Um, he are, it's also visible at the minute 328 uh, where the interviewer described the zoo director as clinical and cold. Um, that's really when he loses control of the interview because it's a statement and not a question. That means that he basically gives the control to the interviewee, who then takes control by asking himself questions to the journalist. That way he can really uh, put emphasis on what the journalist wants to answer, because he's not in the that way the journalist is kind of stumbling and is responding and not respecting his agenda. And that way uh, the interviewer, which is uh, Mr. Holtz, can then uh, really put his opinion out there by asking questions and then 
really making his point bigger. Uh, that's why the statement was a, a mistake from the interviewer's case. Um, for the key messages uh, of the interviewee, uh, throughout the entire interview, he stands, he stand, he stands tall. He stands uh, on his ground and he never backs up. Uh, he doesn't. He's never really on the defense because at some point, as I earlier, earlier said, sorry, he takes control of the interview himself um, by really trying to respond back and use those questions and use the response from the journalist to put his point uh, out in the open. Um, so he really puts he really puts the facts into display. Uh, he's he, for example, talks about the European breeding program as an explanation for why the giraffe was killed and not sent to another zoo uh, for the compatibility and uh, all those scientific terms. Uh, so he really uh, shows uh, his knowledge of the situation and why it has to happen like this. So he's very straight about, first of all, his mentality, uh, his beliefs, and also uh, about the entire process itself. Um, once he got called, he got called out by the interviewer as clinical and cold. Uh, once. He, rather than um, responding directly to questions, uh, as I said, he takes control and then he uses the example of the mass uh, killings of rabbits in the UK uh, to show that they are basically doing the same thing. And it's not because it's a giraffe that it should be any different. Uh, he also puts the emphasis on the fact that he, they did that once the killing was done. They did the dissection as an educational thing because it is normal. Uh, it is something that happens all the time. And since they had to kill it, because the situation uh, was set up like this, uh, he they believed that it was the you could that was the best usage usage that could do of the, the the giraffe, which was now dead, was was which was trying to educate uh, people, not only adults but also school kids and families, on how the similarities between the animal and the human uh, the human body. Uh, were and how the giraffe really functions because it's a very different animal. So he really tries to put emphasis on how uh, this whole process worked and what was the purpose of it and without at any point stumbling or really trying to deviate from his initial point. Um, the in tactics he used by the interviewer uh, were not that clear because he, he really tries to play on the sentimental and emotional side of the audience uh, he doesn't really go straight to the facts. He really tries to uh, get the audience uh, behind him against uh, the scientific kind of cold uh, image the, the, that the director seems to give. Um, he emphasizes on words he's trying to, uh, as for example, I said earlier, the word dismemberment, torn to pieces, horrified, cruelty. He's really, he's really trying to uh, put more um, weight on these arguments to try to win the audience to him and to try to uh, get the, the zoo director to uh, um, maybe respond in another way that he will normally do if those terms were not used. Um, the outcome of the interview, uh, which one was more believable in a sense? Uh, you, really can, you really can say that from an overall, for during the seven and uh, almost eight minutes in, in, of the interview, the zoo director really has his approach set and he follows it all the way around. He takes control of the interview midway through and really is able to uh, make, his, make his point without at any point trying to uh, go in another direction or say something contradictory to what he already said. So uh, in my opinion, he is the one that really stands out because of the subjectivity of the interview, interviewer, the journalist, and also how uh, the interviewer lost control uh, midway through the interview and doesn't really get um, the entire points uh, right since the, the director was able to respond very uh, in a very strict manner and very uh, thoughtful manner. He really thought his plan through and stick to it all the way. And that's why I believe that Mr. Holtz is the one you could say was more believable and if you can call it the winner of the entire process.